Hi guys, I'm not sure if you guys have finished watching yet, but if not, go ahead and watch more. Plus all the videos that we have um, are going to be available on YouTube as soon as they premiere, they're out there forever. So you can watch them again. Um, but oh my gosh, what a fun trip to the beach. Paula, your beach is awesome. <laughs> it's it's okay. cold. It's cold. That's true. That's true. Our beach is very warm right now. Um, I'll just get started and people probably join, you know, come back here a uh, little by little. My, I'm Kirsty Scott. I'm the publisher of Beachcoming Magazine and uh, hosting the event today. I'm so glad you guys could come. Thank you for taking time out of your weekend, holiday or not, to, um, to be with us. And thank you to all of our presenters who have taken time to, Paula, to make that great video. And, um, and uh, Mary Lou will be with us today and she's taking time to give us a live tour of her studio. So um, I really appreciate it. We also have a whole um, bunch of uh, artisans who have uh, supported us this event through um, their advertising on our festival page. So go check them out today if you're thinking of doing some Christmas shopping. Um, do it at a nice small business that that we've got listed there. They've got some fun show specials and discounts too. So it's a great day to go check that out. Um, a couple people have said already, Paula, I can't imagine finding all that in one trip. And <laughs> Matt said, he goes, I, if we found one of those, it would be the best day at the beach. So, so tell us a little bit about your beach and why you do find so much great stuff. There was just so many bottles that were made during the, the 1850s right through to the 1920s that um, there was a huge amount of waste as well and they didn't dispose of it properly they chucked it in the sea. Unfortunately now everything gets chucked in the sea is plastic so we've got the giant pacific gyre but yeah, yeah back then it was glass. Somebody asked like why are there opalescent pieces there were those purposely made or the, is that an accident? I, I think it was first discovered by accident something to do with um, cooling or perhaps the wrong chemical mix and uh -huh. the just appeared. So one of those happy accidents that sometimes happens. How much of the glass that you find do you end up doing something with like making jewelry or um, turning into art or whatever? Um, well, I've learned over the years to just leave quite a lot if I'm not going to be able to do anything with it. But um, maybe about 10% I can make into jewelry and other nice big chunks are good for just um, display. So do you end up keeping them or okay. do you sell them or? Um, these days I, I keep very little. I, I sell most everything. I've, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm torn between becoming a minimalist now. So, uh, so things are just getting sold. I have a photograph of it, so. You do have a photograph of your collection? Or you yeah, photograph it? Yeah, yeah I, I, I photograph it, so I feel if I have a photograph of the thing, I don't need to keep the thing. Yeah, okay, send it over here. Everybody in the chat here today says, we'll each take a few. Okay. <laughs> Dottie's raising her hand, there you go. That would help. Do you go usually go to one beach or are there a bunch of beaches along there that are similar where you can find glass like that? Um, that one is my favorite beach. It, it's the most fun. I, I like to go to the place where I can find cod marbles. So that, that's the best place. And it's exciting getting down there too. It's very good. Well, hey, Mary Lou, you've been there before. Um, yes, it's a fabulous beach, and I was so excited when I found my first cod marble that I yelled, oh, my cod!" <laughs> and um, yeah, it's always fun to have a, a contest of who can find the most marbles uh, when we're out all together. But yeah, getting down there is, is quite interesting. Not the worst uh, cliff I've climbed down, but it, it's in the top 10. Right. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, and I can't wait to go again in April. Yeah, see you then. Yes, definitely. <laughs> but hey, Mary Lou, do you want to oh. show us um, a little bit of your studio? Because Mary Lou has been to Siam before, and she's actually beachcombed all around the world. And so it's 
very fun to see some of the stuff in her collection. Um, like Paula Mary Lou does make jewelry out of some of her stuff, but she, she's got a hoard, but let me tell you, <laughs> we're all, we all think, oh yeah, we got to get rid of it. And you know, I do that all the time. And then I'm like, oh shoot, why did I give those away? That would have been perfect for this little project, but that's okay. But anyway, so Mary Lou, do you want to show us a little bit of your, your studio? Okay. So, um, Starting out um, first, my uh, my studio is called Casa Aloha because my business is Aloha Sea Glass. And um, when you walk in the door, I have my bench right here. And um, I can also start by saying that pretty much everything in here, all the furniture and a lot of the tools, I purchased secondhand and I got all the furniture for free. Um, on Craigslist because I like to recycle and upcycle. So up here is um, a lot of other artists work. And I use that for inspiration. And I have my dad's old, um, ah, what do you call it? Uh, wooden tool chest that I absolutely love because I feel like a part of him is with me in the studio. And I'm quite organized. I have everything labeled. And then these are my Fordhams. And a Fordham is a machine um, that has a long hose. And at the end, there is a handle. And you can switch out all your little um, bits and pieces onto it. It's kind of like what Paula used, but it um, it's a lot more. Uh, complicated, I guess we should say. And then moving over here, I have a little mobile um, thing on wheels, which I have my ball vise on, which is a fancy vise that um, you can clamp your work into and then just move it all around. And um, I was totally lucky enough to find that in a free box at a garage sale and they're, they're several hundred dollars. So it was a total score. And then I have all my hammers here. And then moving over to this side of the studio, this side. Uh, my favorite side. Yes, the, the, um, the giant piece of furniture I call our father. And um, he was found at the dump and he came out of one of the Catholic churches. So it used to uh, house all the holy gear. So that's why I named him our father. And this is my massive, rolling press, uh, rolling mill. And as I put one of the rolling mill plates that I use to texture my uh, metal on the front of it, but you feed this through here with the metal. And then there's a big crank here on the side, which, which I can't use because it's, I have to move my other table. But anyway, that's how that works. And then um, these are projects and all these little, uh, plastic containers. And this is a piece of one of the newest things that I'm working with. It's called Surfite. And this piece was about six feet tall when my husband um, got it for me for Christmas from one of the local surfboard shops. So when they're using the um, resin on the surfboards, they slop it down the sides and it forms these big icicles. And then their floor also gets coated with it. And they often chip up the floor and break up all the stuff and um, they give it to us for free. It's really nice. And then down here, I have just several drawers of tools, but this is Kirsty's favorite drawer and it's called the candy drawer. Thank you. And yeah, it is full of a ton of mostly Northern California glass. Um, and I have it all sorted into colors. And oh, there's some English glass right there. You can see the big chunks. And these are the jewelry quality pieces that I've sorted out from my pounds and pounds of sea glass. I'm, I'm a bit of a hoarder. And then down in here is where I have glass from all over the world. Here's my CM glass. And then in this bin, I have um, Puerto Rican, Russian, and some Japanese. And then those are just little bits. And then here's my 
my jewelry Davenport collection. I have a lot more in the house too, but those are the just a tiny of bit of a hoard, but it's yeah. a gorgeous hoard. I gotta say. Yeah, and then then I can actually go up here, and you can see these are just giant things filled with with glass, also. And then I have my lovely window. Um, at my studio, I've kind of outgrown it. So I had to put my, um, my kiln on wheels. So it's on a, uh, a cart so I can move it around to get it out of the way or move it to the plug when I need to use it. And I used my kiln for enameling and to fire precious metal clay. And someday I'm hoping to learn how to slump glass and I'll be able to use that too. Oh, and then on the top of this here, I have some, some surfite pieces that is that surfboard uh, resin that I've cut and I'm in the midst of sanding it from you know 220 all the way up to 2000 or 1500 grit paper. But this is what the, this is what, I can't know if you can see it. That's what the floor looks like when they break it up. So it would be sitting like yeah. this so and all the different- That's layers. a vertical. The, yeah like slice of the floor is yeah. it really hard Mary Lou or is that is it easy to work with or is it hard to work with well the problem is is there's not a lot of um information anywhere on how to work with it so we've been playing with trial and error we've been using a, a tile saw to cut it um, but I recently just found on Craigslist a used circular saw for stained glass and I'm hoping that that's going to up my game and allow me to uh, cut it into shapes and slice it a lot thinner but yeah it's a pain in the butt to work with and you have to wear a full respirator to do it because you do not want to inhale any of the um surfite dust because it's resin and then over here this is what we call our pickle pot so it's a it's a crock pot filled with um, swimming pool acid and water and after you solder um, with silver or copper uh, it gets fire scale and you put it in that acid bath and it removes the fire scale and then it gets neutralized in baking soda and water and then plain water. And then this big baby is my hydraulic press and I, I can't wait to um, watch Sue Kirk's video on, on how to use it because I'm petrified of it. I, I, I got oh, she it. Has, she has some yeah. fun stuff she's going to show us later. So. Yes. I, um, I was, it was gifted to me by, um, by an actual stranger who became a friend and um, I, I haven't used it very much, but anyway, I'll show you. This is, a, this is one of the dyes, it's a mermaid. I don't know if you can see that, that I've you know, purchased but have never used. I'm kind of a tool hoarder too, but um, hopefully I'll, I'll be, now that I'm retired, I'll have time. And then this is my big um, shear. I use it to cut metal. It's just a cheap one from the you know, tool store. I, I plan to get a nicer one one of these days. And then here is my drilling setup. I, I totally commend Paula for drilling freehanded. I, I have to have mine in a press because I could not drill a piece of glass to save my life um, without using the drill press. And then this lovely machine over here is my bench grinder. And I got this from a lovely um, artist who was retiring. And I use it to grind. This is the grinding wheel. It just grinds little edges off. And then this side I use for um, kind of polishing, kind of taking, taking the top layer of some metal off. This machine over here is my magnetic tumbler. And this piece fits in there and it has uh, thousands of little teeny pins in it that whirl around when it's turned on and you put water in it too. And it is used when you, um, when you heat and solder metal, it becomes soft. It's called annealing and you have to harden it again. And those thousand little um, pins in there act like thousands of little hammers and it makes the metal hard again. So it doesn't you know, bend when you drop it. This is my toaster oven. I have a lot of uh, things in here that you could also use in the kitchen. And um, I use this um, after I apply a, a layer 
where the glass will sit under the glass of um, Protect-A-Clear and it needs to be cured in an oven. So I have a little oven in my studio. And then last but not least, my favorite place, this is where I play with fire. And um, this is my little um, soldering pan. It has charcoal in it, which I solder on. And I have two different torches. This is my workhorse. This one is called the Smith Handy Heat and it's uh, air acetylene. So I have a little tank of acetylene down there. And then I also have a big tank of oxygen and I use, oops, come off your magnet. I also have a Smith mini torch and this is the one that has the oxygen and the um, acetylene. It's a much hotter torch and I use it pretty much for just balling uh, metal ends if I'm making a hinge or something. But um, I don't have any idea how long I've been talking for, but um, <laughs> you are welcome to ask me questions. My studio is out in my backyard and my little doggies come and visit me all the time. It's very fun seeing the different styles, Paula. Um, most of your stuff is drilled or else I love those little rock pool things where you take like the mistake that you made or the piece of glass that wasn't done and, and use it for something beautiful, which is really fun fun to see. I don't know if you guys saw that in the, in the video, but um, uh, Anne-Marie said, love seeing you in Santa Cruz. You've done a lot since retirement, Mary Lou. <laughs> so I know. Mary Lou yeah. was a nurse for many, many years. So she's yes. delivered hundreds of babies probably. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Um, Nancy asked, how do you learn what tools you need? Is there like, Paula, did you do any specific training to be a jeweler or how did you learn? No, I, I, I can't even remember how I found out anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a blur. <laughs> it really is all, all a blur. At the moment, I'm trying to get everyone's face back. Hold on, I'll help you. Okay, thank you. I have tech support. <laughs> there you go. I know that tech supporter. I have made things worse. <laughs> That's okay. Mary Lou, you had some uh, formal training in jewelry making, right? Um, some, yes. I, um, I originally uh, made beaded earrings with, with wrapping wire for many, many, many years. And then um, I had collected a, a box of sea glass when I was in Hawaii and years ago, and I found it in a cupboard and I thought, huh, I wonder if I can drill this. So I learned how to drill watching YouTube videos. And then I got bored with that. And I uh, contacted a local um, jeweler and said, can you teach me how to solder? I want to put a bezel around a piece of sea glass. And so I took a weekend class with her and she let me join her studio uh, where I went for probably a year. And um, she always said I was fearless. I, you know, the worst thing that can happen if you're using a torch is you can melt your silver big deal, recycle it. It's, it's totally fine. Don't be afraid of it. And don't burn yourself, of course. But um, so I did that. And then I took a lot of different workshops through the local colleges um, metal group. And then I've also taken several classes at the junior college. And then uh, during COVID, the, the teacher knows uh, my girlfriend and I, um, Mint Jellies, Becky, uh, so well that she allowed us to do a home study class during COVID um, on my dining room table and we did wax, lost wax casting. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is a little um, limpet shell that I uh, made a mold from and then cast it in wax and then the wax melts out and it turns to silver. And so I put it with a little piece of CM glass. So that was super fun. And uh, the wax casting setup is another just giant um, expense. So at this point, I, I'm not investing in that right now while I, can, while I can do it at the local college. But yeah, it's pretty much trial and error. I mean, you can really have a little kitchen table studio where you have a creme brulee torch and you just you know need some silver, you need a saw and um, you, know, you can get started fairly easy. Did you come up with that rock pool idea or how did you come like and and like when it's done it looks like a dome is that just like the resin does that or do you have to shape it. 
build it up slowly until it makes a dome or you can leave it flat as long as the broken pieces are not poking out and dangerous then then it's good um well you know mick that had the guest house at um east shore guest house he has some some girls that come from um i think it's washington state um they came regularly and there were four of them and someone had found a tiny broken piece of teal that was a, a gorgeous color and she asked if i could just smash it up and make a matching pair of earrings with that one piece so that was how it came about really very cool they're really really fun thank you they're fun to make it's it's good for getting out your frustrations <laughs> okay so Leslie said I thought you were going to say you melt your hand but I missed that part Leslie what did you mean <laughs> anyways yeah and and she also said that she was getting ready to uh get rid of some of her clutter and I told her that we would all be happy to help her with that too so <laughs> Leslie has a lot of very beautiful stuff from from Scotland and UK so Leslie is saying that the worst thing was to melt your silver um but yeah the worst would be to melt your hand not the silver <laughs> you can, no you can I, I had a significant burn um a few months ago from trying to get a bunch of work done and I wasn't paying attention, but yes, always have your hair back because your hair can be pulled off um, with this tool. Um, somebody recently posted on one of my metal groups that they had a big chunk of their hair pulled off. And then also your hair can catch on fire if it's in front of you. So I always wear a cotton or wool and have my hair back always. Because Jan readjusts her hair. <laughs> I know we have a lot of jewelers here today on this uh, on this chat. So Dan's a jeweler, Dottie, look at all you guys, Wheezy. But yeah, it's uh, it's always fun to see how other people do stuff because their setups are always different. Um, this this but, is really neat to be able to see other people's studios and how they work and how they work from their collections. And we have so many similarities and so many differences. So, but it's it's really great. And I've never met any of the people presenting yet. So this is really wonderful to meet you this way. So it really you. is great. Like, you know, the first time I did the um, virtual festival last year, I did it because nobody could get together. And it, it a lot of people said, I never get together, together with other people. I live in Turkey or I live in on the Isle of Skye or I you know, like people who live in Australia never get to meet all the people. So that's one of the really fun things about um, Zoom, because <laughs> there's a lot of not fun about Zoom, but the great thing is it's fun to be able to just, you know, see what other people are up to and, and meet them this way. Yeah, and my, so. my studio is always open for tours if you're ever in Santa Cruz. I love to um, uh, show people my studio because it is my little special place. I, I just am totally at peace and grounded when I'm in here. It's very, very cute. It's a lovely little spot. We did actually uh, a video about Mary Lou uh, making jewelry. Uh, I think it was last year. So it's it's also on the YouTube channel. So if you want to watch that, it's very fun. Um, and you definitely have to go visit Paula because her beaches are so killer. <laughs> it's just, it, it's incredible. Like when I, we went down to the beach, I visited a couple years ago, we went down to the beach and they were like, oh, we're sorry. There's not that much glass. And I thought if this, if I was at home, this would be the best day I ever had. So <laughs> even her crummy day in CM is, it's pretty darn cool. So, um, and I do appreciate it. It's very fun to watch what you found on the beach and then see you working on it. And as I said, I just don't know if I could have drilled those beauties those hearts are so gorgeous <laughs> thank you but the hard part is sorting it yeah oh my gosh I know I know <laughs> so do you end up bringing stuff back to the beach Paula or you just yeah once I have done I've, I've taken I've taken bags back before um that makes a pretty photo as well just to, uh, to pour a bunch of it in a rock pool right you call them tide pools don't you um, yes pour a bunch of it in there and then just um, take a photo and wait for the waves to take it away. Anne Marie uh, is here and she beachcombs up in Canada and then her studio's back in the Great Lakes. So that's pretty fun to, 
I mean, it's really fun to probably go and pick up the stuff and then bring it home and work on it there. How I've does your had people in there? customs say, why is your suitcase so heavy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody's saying they're envious of your studio, Mary Lou, because you have all those fabulous tools. Well, it's... <laughs> Well, it's been a long process that, you know, I, I allow myself to get one really nice tool um, pretty much every year. And it's my lovely clients who support me. And um, that's how I'm able to, to buy a nice, a nice tool for myself. Yeah. Paula, is your studio in your house right there? Yeah. Yeah. My studio consists mostly of stock. It's boxes, just ugly cardboard boxes full of books. <laughs> So Very nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like Mary Lou's. Hey, you gotta hit all those those boot sales, right? Yeah, find some free furniture. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, cool. Well, thank you guys both for um, uh, Paula for doing all those videos. That was great. And, uh, yeah. And yeah, showing our thing. And thank you, Mary Lou, for taking us through your studio. Um, yeah, Jan says she's feeling uh, inspired to get organized. Leslie's hoping to go back to see him in April. I'm jealous. I hope so. I hope to be there too. It's yeah, I'll be there. April. Maybe yes. I can meet Leslie. Yay! That would be fun. <laughs> and then we can all help Paula de stash, take all all of her overflow, and <laughs> we'll bring our giant bags home. Dottie's Dottie's there. Come on, <laughs> bring a suitcase home from see him. <laughs>